Oxford Bibliographies is a great resource to start your research in your classical civilization courses. You will find links to it and library research guides for classical civilization, such as the General Classical Civilization Resource Guide at the UTM Library and CLA 230 Introduction to Greek History. Oxford Bibliographies will help you get started with your research fast because you will find primary and secondary sources listed together, combining the strengths of an annotated bibliography and a reference list. The breadth of topics is huge, ranging from the broad, such as Greek religion and Alexander the Great, to narrow topics such as death and burial in the Roman age, Plutarch's Moralia, and the Panathenaic Festival. Each subject area has an editor-in-chief, an editorial board, and peer reviewers, ensuring a balanced perspective, scholarly accuracy, and authority. To access Oxford Bibliographies, use the link, which is embedded in this video and listed in the description below. When searching in Oxford Bibliographies, we recommend the Advanced Search option rather than the Simple Search. The Simple Search is not as efficient. When carrying out your research, we recommend that you be aware of names of well-researched individuals, time period, specific terms, specific primary documents, geographical locations. Until you are familiar with the platform, we recommend using only a few keywords, such as tomb, instead of naivolia, tike, and funeral monument. You can search two different concepts, such as freed and tomb. If you are looking into the social structure of the Roman Empire, using a specific term like equestrian and decurion would also work. Let's try searching for freed with an asterisk and tomb. The asterisk for the stem freed will return results for any word including that stem as well as freedman or freed woman or any other word with the stem freed. Let's tick the box for classics. Click search. The top result is death and burial in the Roman age. That looks promising, so let's click that. Looking into the table of contents, click this little black triangle to expand for the full table of contents. If we click the heading Funerary Monuments, this expands to give us a list by geographical location. We can begin examining secondary sources. Notice that Maureen Carroll's Spirits of the Dead, Roman Funerary Commemoration in Western Europe, is described as, quote, the major English language study of Roman epitaphs of recent decades, placing them in the contexts of funerary ritual, assessing their purpose as commemorative markers, and evaluating the insights to be gained for family structures, migration, social mobility, and afterlife beliefs. So this could be a good book to start to understand the issues surrounding the topic and guide you to more resources. If we click Find This Resource, it expands and shows Get It UTL. If we click that, we are taken to Library Search. We find links to open the ebook. If we return to the table of contents and collapse the Funerary Monuments heading, we see the heading Case Studies. When we click that, we see the heading Patrons, Freed, and Slaves at Pompeii. Let's look at the book chapter written by Lepetz and Van Andriga. Publios Venios Fileros Vivos Monumentum Fecit. From the book Living Through the Dead, Burial and Commemoration in the Classical World, edited by Maureen Carroll and Jane Rempel. When we click Find This Resource, and then the Get It UTL link, we see that the record in library search is for a print version. There is no ebook, so we can copy down the call number for the print copy at the UTM library and go to the stacks there to get the book to read. When you go to the library to get a print copy of a book, make sure to look at other books on the shelf near it. Some of them are very likely to address your topic as well. If we click Find This Resource, 
and get it, UTL, for the book written by Van Andrega et al., Maurier à Pompée, we see that the book is only located at another University of Toronto library, Robarts Library. To read it, you will either need to travel to Robarts Library, or you will need to request delivery of the book to UTM. This is free, but can take some time. Plan for at least a week just to be safe. If you are unsure how to request a book from another University of Toronto library through library search, check the description below for a link to another video that explains how to go about doing that. Let's try another search. This time, let's type in Alexander the Great. Tick the box for classics. Click search. We see that Alexander the Great has an entire entry to himself. So let's click that. Who wrote this page? We see that the author is Professor Joseph Roisman. If we click the author's name, we can see his faculty profile and academic credentials. A double click the little black triangle to expand the table of contents. We see that it is different from that of the entry for death and burial in the Roman age. Each table of contents will be tailored to meet the needs of the content for the topic. Now that you know how to open the resources in an Oxford Bibliography's entry, let's consider the different types of resources that you will find. See this word monograph? A monograph is a book. It has a more specific meaning, but for your purposes, whenever you see the word monograph, recognize that you will be using a book. Let's open the first monograph by Edward Anson. Alexander the Great, Themes and Issues. The library search record shows us that the library gives you access to an ebook, as well as physical print copies at UTM and throughout the University of Toronto library system. This monograph is an excellent starting point to begin researching more specific themes and issues related to the career of Alexander the Great. Let's click the heading for Alexander the Great online. Notice the general note under the heading Many websites are dedicated to Alexander, and as might be expected of cyberspace, their quality and reliability varies enormously. Since these are external websites, rather than resources licensed to or purchased by the University of Toronto Libraries, click the green hyperlinked title, we get a 404 error. Websites like this, vetted by scholars, are still better than the ones found randomly through a search engine, but they are still more likely to suffer for these types of technical difficulties. Unlike a book or a journal article with easily traceable citations, this content will be harder to track down. When it comes to the classics, there is nothing quite like a good book. You can also find primary sources directly from Oxford bibliographies. Keep in mind that many primary sources will be collected in a book. Keep an eye out for words like sources, accounts, texts, or selections in the titles of books listed in Oxford bibliographies. This article contains the convenient heading, Extant Ancient Accounts of Alexander. The word extant means still in existence. It is used because many ancient texts have not survived the ravages of time, although we have mentions of them in other sources, which lets us know that they once existed. The heading, Collections of Translated Sources, will give collections of primary sources that are often shorter or condensed, but also more of a variety to examine. If you ever have any questions about using Oxford Bibliographies online, you can contact your liaison librarian, Yayo Umetsubo, by clicking Liaison Librarians on the library homepage and scrolling down for her contact information. You can also reach out to research specialists by clicking Reference and Research Help, and you will find hours to meet with us in person at the library using online chat and by email.